All right, so next we're gonna do a couple of experiments with this model. So the first one we're gonna do is we are going to scale up savings. You know, we are the masters of the economy. We get to choose the household savings rate. They don't choose that. We, the planners, choose the economy saving, savings rate. Okay, so let's think about that. How does that look? So again, let's assume that we have some production function that's gonna give us a little yt function. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna be increasing in little kt, okay? So what happens if we move from a low rate of savings to a higher rate of savings? So what's gonna happen is we're gonna shift from this dark black line up to this dotted black line, okay? So of course, you're gonna see that in, in the steady state, we're gonna get the same result as before. The growth rate of capital is going to be N plus G. The growth rate of, uh, of output is gonna be N plus G. And the growth rate of, cap, uh, of output per worker is gonna be G. Okay, so it's gonna be exactly the same in the steady state, all right? But there's gonna be a transition. Okay, so if we start here, and then suddenly we increase our savings, well, we're gonna start moving this direction along the uh, little KT axis, which means that our economy is actually gonna grow faster than the steady state level of growth. So output is gonna grow faster than N plus G for a while. It's gonna start out growing very quickly and then it's gonna converge kind of slowly eventually to this, uh, this new level of K star and then it's gonna be at that, the old rate of growth forever, if that makes sense. So along the transition path, we're gonna get a faster growth rate. But then in the steady state, we're gonna have the same growth rate as before. Okay, so one question is, how long is the transition path in, in, in the real world? Well, it can be quite a long time. So I, I don't know if I'm gonna talk about this here, but you know, it could be 30 years, something like that, depending on how much you increase savings. Uh, notice that at our increased level of savings, not surprisingly, we've raised investment we're also raising the steady state level of output. So this is increasing GDP in the long run, the level of GDP in the long run. Not the growth rate of GDP, but the level of GDP does increase in the long run. So increasing the savings rate has a level effect, but no long run effect on the growth rate, although it does increase the growth rate in, in the transition. Okay, so, you know, why doesn't, you know, suppose the government could decide, why not just increase GDP as much as possible, right? Why not increase the savings rate as much as possible? Well, the reason why is because we don't, you know, maybe the, the benevolent planner doesn't care about GDP. The benevolent planner cares about consumption, okay? So, you know, we assume that consumption is what matters for welfare, at least economically. Consumption is, is what matters. So what is the equilibrium consumption per unit of effective labor, of effects labor? Well, you'll recall that output is just, so you know, little y, output, so that's actual output per unit of human capital or unit of effective labor is gonna be equal to, by the way, we've dropped the t's here, that makes our lives easier, is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be equal to at the household level consumption plus investment. We haven't, we never used this investment, but I'll put it out there anyway. So of course, you know, what does the household do? Either they consume or they save. Maybe I should have written savings. And we've made an assumption about savings. We've assumed that this is Y. We've assumed here that this is C plus S of Y, right? So that's consumption per unit of human capital, of course. Here's savings per unit of human capital, and here's uh, output per unit of human capital. So, you know, this is sort of an accounting split. Okay, so if we want to think about uh, consumption, we're going to con get that consumption is equal to 1 minus S times Y. Okay, let's keep writing this out. So now we've got y minus sy. So what is y? Well, y is f of k. That's our definition of y, little y. 
all right, minus s of y. So far, so good. Now we know that in the steady state, s of y is equal to the breakeven level of investment. Okay, so let's do one more substitution. We're going to get f k minus n plus g plus delta times little k. Right, this is the breakeven level of investment. At steady state, investment is equal to the breakeven level, so we can make this replacement. Okay, that's going to bring us down here. Consumption in the steady state is equal to output minus breakeven investment. Okay, so obviously now, if we have an investment rate of one then we can't have any consumption. You don't have to look at this equation, just think about it. If everybody, you can just see it here, c is equal to one minus s times y. If s is equal to one, well, mathematically, c is equal to zero, but just think about it, right? If, uh, if you're investing everything and not consume, then you can't be consuming anything. Uh, so consumption must be zero when s is equal to one. Okay, let's think about the other side. The other one's a little bit more confusing, takes a little bit more to think about. So suppose that S is zero. Well, if you're not saving anything, it seems like then you could be consuming more, right? But recall, this is the steady state level of consumption. Okay, so in other words, the level of consumption when the capital stock is not changing, capital per unit, physical capital per unit of human capital. Well, if you never save, then it must be true that, that little k is going to get smaller and smaller over time. The population is growing, technology is growing, and also capital stock is depreciating. All those things are pushing little k down if I'm not investing. So in fact, it's going to keep disappearing until it's going to keep getting smaller and smaller until finally it's zero. And then once it's zero, it's never going to change. So the, the only steady state when the level of savings is zero is actually zero. So zero production. So at zero production, then there's also zero consumption. Okay, so at extreme S, this thing has got to be zero. So you can think about it. Suppose we were to, to write steady state consumption, let's call this C star, as a function of S, and let's say this is one, this is zero. It's got to have some sort of shape like this. You know, it could be kind of funky. It could be, we haven't, we haven't given you any argument for why it couldn't be squiggly or something, but we do know it's zero here. And we do know it's zero here. And we also know that uh, somewhere else it's not zero. You know, at some steady state where you're not consuming everything and also you're not investing zero, then there is some positive amount of consumption. Okay, so the maximum, the, like the best we can do in terms of the savings rate cannot be zero and it cannot be one. We know it's better somewhere else. Okay, so let's use calculus to try to figure out what the maximum of this thing is. So let's take the derivative of steady state consumption with respect to the savings rate and set that equal to zero. Okay. And you can double check that this thing is concave. It'll be pretty obvious because we've assumed that F prime is con that we've, we've assumed that F is concave. So this integrand here, or this, uh, this function here must be concave as well in K. But anyway, um, okay. I mean, do I need to, no, I don't really need to do anything. So what is the derivative of C star with respect to S? Well, it's the derivative of F with respect to K and then K with respect to S. And then here it's just the derivative of K with respect to S. Okay. So we wanna find where this thing is equal to zero, where the critical value of this thing is equal to zero. And you can see here, since we know that the steady state level of capital is increasing in S, right? We saw that whenever we shift up S, from this last slide, let me flip back one side. Whenever we shift up S, we're gonna get a higher amount of little k in steady state. Okay, so this thing here is strictly greater than zero. So the only way we can set this whole expression equal to zero is to make sure that this thing here is equal to zero. Okay, so the, the slope of the production function has to be equal to the slope of the break-even investment line. Okay, so let's draw that graphically. I hope I have it graphically on the next page. I do. 
Okay, so what we're going to look for is the point where the slope of this production function up here is equal to the slope of this line. So we have to kind of do our best. <laughs> this is this is dangerous now. In fact, I can't even get it to work because I can't seem to click on the other. Well, let's see. Go back to the presentation. Oh, hang away. All right, let's see if I can, how I can do. <laughs> uh, close enough. <laughs> well, well, it didn't quite work, but you can see that this the slope of this thing is supposed to be equal to the slope of this thing. Okay, at this point there, uh, I tried my best. So anyway, uh, that's going to show you the steady state level of capital or the savings rate, you know, when the savings rate is equal to SL. Oh, wait a second. This is SL means too low. Okay. See, I could see it. I could see that this was too low. That's why I drew this line too steep. That was like, that worked out perfectly. So this is this, the level of consumption at this uh, level of uh, savings is too low. So the gap here is not as big as it could be, right? Here's the amount of production and here's the amount of investment. So this amount, this distance here is our, um, is our steady state consumption. That's not as high as it could be. Let's go to the next one. Okay, did I have a high? No, okay. So you could imagine also that we could have something over here and then this slope up here would be too shallow. It would be shallower than this steady state investment line. So uh, what we need is right here in the middle. That's the uh, that's the steady state level of of investment or savings that gives us the most possible consumption. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because if we move to the right, then well, first let's say that I'm going to do it without this line because I don't think I'll be able to recreate it. But I'm going to do a terrible version now. But I'm going to try my best to match. Eh, not too bad. So the idea here is that this line has the same slope as this line. And it kind of makes sense, right? So how do you want to think about it? If we're below this point, then when we move a little bit to the right, then this uh, production is going up more than steady state investment. So that means we're going to get more consumption. Uh, and then if we're too far up here, then you can see this line is flat. So then if we further increase uh, if we further increase steady state production, then we're sort of closing this gap between these two lines. Okay, so that's bad too. So we wanna to get to the point where, you know, we can't increase the gap by moving farther to the right, and we're not sort of decreasing the gap by moving farther to the right. Okay, so that's gonna be the point where these two things are, are these two slopes are parallel. So this is our steady state level of consumption. That our steady state level of savings that maximizes consumption, sometimes known as the golden rule level of saving.